Hey, welcome everyone to Today in the Scene by Indie Arcade Wave. I'm Joe, your host, and here on In the Scene, we dive into what's happening in the arcade scene. From new indie arcade developers, arcade owners and operators, and just news in the space. We're here to answer the question, is the arcade dead? And spoiler on that one, the answer is definitely no. I'm a part of the team that brought Galactic Battleground to the arcade space in 2017 and have been active in the arcade space since then. Now, let's dive into this week's episode, and I want to talk about conventions this week. I have a few of the leaders of MAGFest convention, which is going on next week, January 5th through the 8th. Uh, let's bring them on and learn a little bit more about the gathering of these fellow nerds. We've got Dak, who is the communications director of MAGFest, as well as one of the, or, as well as Socks, who's the gaming division head and one of the indie arcade department heads. How are you guys doing? What's up, Joe? Thanks for having us. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you guys got on here. I know Socks. We've been talking about this for. It, I feel like it's, it's been, been a couple on the map years. for a couple years. Yeah, yeah. since uh, the podcast started. Pretty much, we've been chatting. Like it just didn't work out this year. It was too busy. You know, yep. things happen. But here we are. We're ready to here do it are. this time. And uh, let's just jump right in with you guys. So cool. let's get intros. Who is Dak? Who is Socks? What do you guys do? What are you guys about? Uh, all right, I'll, I'll go first. So I'm Dak. Um, I'm the uh, communications director at uh, Magfest. I've been uh, volunteering there for I don't know, probably like. 10 i don't know maybe close to 15 years usually in the like charity department and then about five years ago i got hired uh full-time as the uh, communications director uh so i've been there um ever since you know living in uh baltimore which is kind of where we're sort of based out of uh the actual show is down in national harbor so it's pretty close by but um yeah i mean i've been just a gigantic fan of magfest since the first time i went and uh i have always kind of had just this huge drive to get more and more involved to the point where now it's a career so um yeah that's kind of where i'm at <laughs> uh cool so uh my first magfest was 2017 my friends brought me along uh i saw death by audio arcade there the following year i built an arcade cabinet the next year i was staff and then i took over the department in 2020 uh, and now I'm one of the division heads for the uh, gaming division. So yeah, same same with Dak. I fell in love with it. I think everyone who attends kind of immediately falls in love with it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, from I, everyone that I hear that goes to it, um, I've heard of people that travel from like uh, California or New York, and they love it. I mean, it, it seems like it's kind of this hotbed for, I mean, Sox is going to know this, the, the indie arcade scene. It is a really big spot. Yeah. And the Death by Audio Arcades, Mark Klebe, who who lined me up with Socks, um, they talk about it year round. Like it, it's like it's always happening. So yeah. let's jump into what is Magfest? Like how did it start? Um, so you started off by saying like we're going to jump into the convention scene, and Magfest is a festival, not a convention. <laughs> That's the biggest, the biggest thing that differentiates it, I guess. Um, like if you go to GDC or PAX or something like that, there's a show floor. It's open from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., something like that. MAGFest is 74 hours straight, and it is, like, there's a lot going on at all hours, and people are out playing DDR at 4 in the morning. And I think that's why people love it, is just because it's nonstop. Yeah, for sure. It's, uh, I mean, you know, if we're really boiling it down, MAGFest stands for Music and Gaming Festival. And so it's this... Uh, you know, I guess at its core, it's the collection of, um, you know, the video game music scene and sort of everything that kind of orbits that space. And so you've got things like composers, you've got developers, you've got um, all of these little, uh, you know, like kind of niche communities that are sort of tangentially related. And then you've got a lot more broad appeal uh, with things like, you know, um, you know, gigantic concerts and a huge free play arcade. And of course, like the indie um, uh, floor and everything a tabletop like that library yeah i mean you know you got cosplayers so you've got like a lot of like convention staples but then um there's always uh sort of like a magfest spin on things because um you know at the end of the day uh the reason why this was essentially formed and has grown into what it is is because of the community's love for uh you know video games video game music live performance things like that um but uh it's honestly, it's one of those things where if you show up, there's going to be, I mean, there's like a lock picking class, you know, there's like poetry readings, there's yoga, there's like all kinds of like crazy things that you'd never expect that, you know, say, I don't know, um, you know, E3 or PAX or something like that. Um, but then you got a lot of the staples too. 
Yeah, I mean, it sounds like there's a ton to do, and it's just, would you say, 74 hours or whatever of just open floor, all these different things going on. Yep. And to hear that there's yoga classes there, that's pretty cool. <laughs> lock picking? I mean, shit, who doesn't want to know how to lock pick? <laughs> right. um, that, it, that's... I suppose worth calling out, uh, MAGFest, the organization, has, Zach, correct me here, five full-time employees? Six? I think it's four or five full-time and then maybe like six or seven total like including like contractors or part-time something like that and then over a thousand volunteers right and so and that's mainly because we're a 501c3 we're a nonprofit, right. and um the really cool thing about this is like yeah there's a, a handful of people like me who you know uh actually do this um for a living as an occupation but um a vast majority of the work actually really gets done by people like socks who are volunteering you know their time they're not socks is sadly not getting paid as much as he wants to be um, quite the opposite and 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 it's uh but it's really cool to kind of see um so much energy and um so many people come together for something that they love so much and that's not just magfest but it's also the scene in general you know right and that's I mean, where that... you get like the yoga and the lock picking exactly is, right someone attends and they say oh it'd be cool if magfest had a maker space and people could like make cosplay at the event and the response to that is would you like to do that here's a platform for you and that's how departments get pretty going. much yep i think that's so cool and it, it leads me right into the next question is like you guys obviously went to the convention and fell in love with the convention now it's your job you're volunteering let's let's figure out where you guys first fell in love with video games like what are some of your earliest memories with video games that led you to this point Dak, do you want to start? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I mean, so I, I guess uh, the first time I ever saw a video game, I think I was over just like a friend of a friend's house and it was on, you know, an NES and I had no idea what was going on and all these moving blobs of color were on a television that I didn't understand and I had this controller and I was just bouncing around and I think that like planted the first seed. But the, the moment where I realized I really loved video games, like, and that was just what that was like my thing was I went to um, Universal Studios in Florida and they had this, I don't know, it's like some kind of thing where uh, you got, um, uh, you know, two teams in the audience basically, and they're kind of competing against each other. So almost like a double dare thing, but you know, at the, at Universal Studios and there's like a little host and everything. And I think it might be like broadcast on their like closed circuit television around whatever. But uh, they had um, one part of this uh, was not a physical challenge. It was they picked two people from the audience to come down and demo uh, Sonic and Knuckles, which had not released yet. And um, I got selected from the audience. Uh, I had never played a Sonic game or really much of any games at all. And the goal was uh, I was Knuckles. The other guy from like the blue team was Sonic. And uh, whoever could get the furthest in stage one basically won it for their team. And of course I just trounced this guy, you know, <laughs> a, absolute uh, natural, you know, finished the level, got all the chaos emeralds. Now I did win, but uh, that was like so exciting to me. And so um, I remember, uh, you know, I immediately asked my parents, you know, for my next like birthday or whatever, like I want a Sega Genesis. I want, I want to play the Sonic game, you know, all these things. And then it was, it was just downhill from there. <laughs> um, yeah. So, Growing up, like pre-forming memories, uh, I had a ColecoVision, several of them even, with nice. all the weird add-ons and stuff, um, and just fell in love with it. Uh, I think because I was an only child and it was something to do. Uh, eventually, I got a Sega Genesis, and then another one, and then another one. I, My parents tell me this a lot, but we went on a family trip to Ocean City, and, you know, it's a big trip. There's lots of things to do. There's a beach. There's, like rides and stuff and the only thing i wanted to do for the entire nine days was hang out in the arcade there playing like pac-man or probably mr do it's it was my favorite and still is my favorite so probably mr do but it's yeah downhill from there i i mean i think those are both pretty cool origin stories for how i mean especially playing like an unreleased sonic and I'm the same way, you know, you go on vacation and you find an arcade, you want to play. I mean, most of the time that I travel, especially nowadays, that's a goal of mine is to visit the an arcade in that city that I've never seen so that I can see kind of how each arcade is different. And sometimes you find that rare gem that like you're not going to find anywhere else. So that's always a really fun thing. Um, let's talk about 
what people can expect when they come to the convention like you you mentioned kind of briefly like there's a whole bunch of stuff to do but what are some things this year that you guys are really excited about showing off that people will be able to enjoy as much as you can say obviously because yeah the socks, hasn't what, do happened yet. What, what are you what are you most excited for this time socks oh, it's there's so much it it like i don't want to spit out you know generic responses or anything <laughs> but legit i try to go into it with no expectations or not even paying attention to things and just wander until something cool happens um there's i am excited to see cybertronic spree they're one of our like headlining musical acts this year um they're put up a photo of them they're like transformers that play music oh, yeah yeah that's gonna be sick um there's a couple other music acts I'm really excited to see. Uh, there's a couple things in... There's actually three indie spaces at MAGFest. There's the Indie Arcade. There's uh, MIVS, the MAGFest Indie Video Game Showcase, and MITS, the MAGFest Indie Tabletop Showcase. Uh, there's a couple cool things in both of those that I'm really excited to try out. Like, first time these are being shown in public. Um, what else is their deck? Oh, man, dude, there's so much. I mean, like, from sort of the the highest level, like, the reason why I would say a bulk of uh, our attendees uh, show up are probably the concerts. You know, we have, I want to say it's uh, 30, 40-plus concerts um, this year. Um, some of them are gigantic acts, like the 8-Bit Big Band um, and Button Masher. They actually just won a Grammy, uh, the first, like, video game music arrangement Grammy uh, ever, which is really awesome. Uh, like you said, uh, Cybertronic, there's uh, really great bands and uh, the venue itself, they're, like the concerts are always completely mind blowing, um, at least to me, because I, I just don't understand how that magic happens. Um, but then like the other, the flip side of that is we have just this huge arcade, you know, three, 300 plus uh, free play arcade machines, uh, you know, every single console, hundreds of TVs, tournaments, all of this stuff. So it really like scratches any itch for kind of those very basic tenants of you know a music festival or like a gaming convention right um but my kind of personal favorite stuff uh i uh i really love our jam space that's probably the thing that i really fell in love with that's um a location where you can uh just hop in and there will be music musicians there they'll have lead sheets even if you don't really play that much of an instrument um you know they'll kind of help you out and basically you can just form a band kind of in real time and uh, play video game songs, play kind of whatever you want. And um, it's very like uh, loose, but structured um, in a very friendly way. I love jam space and jam clinic, things like that. Um, and then there's there, like these. Go, there go is a new addition to the jam clinic this year. Is there? Uh, what is it? I, I forget. There's a name for it, but like the the attendee orchestra. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. You probably know more about it than I do. Oh, I probably don't. I just know that there is uh, basically like some sort of community orchestra that will be created uh, in real time somehow the, at the event. So this is like one of those the, things where somebody showed up with like the crazy idea, you know, a year or two ago. And then it's just like, all right, well, let's figure out the logistics and just kind of make that work. The jam space is normally like a couple, maybe a dozen people in a room just kind of jamming. This one, I think, is like 80 people got sheet music to rehearse ahead of time. Right. They're doing, I think, three rehearsals on site and then like an actual performance at the event. Uh, one of my friends is playing violin in it, and that's the only reason I know about anything that's actually happening. But I'm super excited to, to see that. Um, yeah. yeah, that's that's awesome. Uh, I mean, we have like little jam pods where uh, that, that just means there will be a desert. So one thing that used to happen, um, regardless of whether we wanted it uh, to happen or not, is people would just start setting up instruments in the hallways and just start playing. Right. And um, at most conventions, that's kind of uh, frowned upon behavior. And uh, at MAGFest, instead of saying, oh, no, you can't do this in the hotel or whatever, we just would tape off little sections and say, okay, well, here is just your designated spot to make noise and entertain as many people as you want. And so we've got things like that. Um, I guess switching like total gears, you know, there's um, a lot of like D&D &D LARPing kind of stuff. Uh, there's uh, the, the Starships uh, Horizon kind of D&D uh, &D sort of thing. Um, there's... Uh, um a gigantic lan um uh which is uh, byoc and um 
they always have like just these amazing tournaments. We've got a huge like smash tournament uh, thing going on this year since our uh, theme is kind of um, based a little bit around like Smash Brothers. Um, but then we have like these tiny little things that like I'm sure Sox could kind of get into like like for example we have a Danny De- DeVito shrine. That's what I was know? gonna go to. Yeah, yeah, like like that's that's always one of my favorite things to point out because this was one of those things where. Um, I don't even know the actual origin story of this because I've heard so many different ones. But for whatever reason, um, years ago, people started just setting up a literal shrine to Danny DeVito. Um, and Why not, it's usually, right? yeah, right. And it's like, uh, you know, it's moved different locations um, until, you know, a few years back, we were like, you know what? They're going to do this anyway. Can we just set up like a designated location for a Danny DeVito shrine? And um, as soon as we did that, it just kind of exploded in size. And so now you've got uh, so many people who are, you know, throughout the year collecting or creating this like Danny DeVito paraphernalia that they then just bring to Super Magfest to put there um, in the shrine. And it's one of those little things where like it doesn't make any sense um, to most people, but when they see it, like they kind of get it. They're like, Oh yeah. Okay, cool. This is just that kind of show where you just get, get to do whatever. Um, and we sort of like to embrace the kind of wild shenanigans that, uh, go on. But, uh, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot to do. It's uh, honestly, um, I I've had friends come who are not really into music or gaming and they've found like their own thing it could be like a uh, hobby crafting um you know lock picking is like one of those things where you know my dad is a locksmith so he kind of loved that aspect of things and it's just if if you show up you're gonna find something awesome guaranteed yeah it just seems like a, a really like open community there's just so much going on that you're going to find something in there that you enjoy doing and or you're going to find something that you want to try out and now you're going to be like, okay, I like this. Um, that's so cool that you, there's there's so much to do. And I find that with a lot of conventions or festivals that I've gone to where it is very, very video game or arcade focused. And it's, it's cool to be there. But after a little while, you're like, okay, I played all the arcade games. I saw all the old consoles. Like, what do I do now? I still have a whole day. And it sounds like you guys really figured out how to fill that and give people more to do in that time. It's sort of like the ethos and it's like, even in the core values is that everything MAGFest does is driven by participation. So it's not like an edict from DAC or anyone else in the office. Like we're going to have this, we're going to have this. It's volunteers saying, what if we had this, can we make that happen? (laughs) And that, that ethos like comes through in the vibes at the event is you're not seeing something put on because like this is going to be profitable or anything like that. It's being put on because people care about it and wanted to platform things. Right. Yeah. I, I think that's, that's perfect. That's exactly what you want out of a festival is to hear feedback from the people that are going and adapt, you know, create more things to do. Let's let's talk about the indie scene. I know this is a little more Sox division here. Yeah, this is. Um, but what has the indie scene meant to the show, and what do you think about the indie scene? I've I've noticed it's been growing like crazy, but obviously you're way more hands on with with uh, with Mark and Death by Audio than I am. So what do you yeah. what has the scene meant to the show? Um, it's I I had to like draw out a graph earlier of how quickly the indie arcade space has grown. Uh, Over the years, 2014, there was one cabinet that Death by Audio brought. Mm -hmm. This year, we're at 80 different games that are in the indie arcade space. Uh, And what I really love about it is that by platforming this weird niche of gaming in a place with so many other things happening, like we just talked about, like people are coming to see the Proto Men or to play Frogger for 72 hours straight. having these weird niche games in that space encourages people to say like, oh, I didn't know you could do this. I didn't know there were like, here are the people that made these games. I can talk to them. I can make these sorts of weird games. Uh, That's how I got involved. I've, there's at least like six, seven other developers that started making alt control games or building their own cabinets as a direct result of our space in MAGFest, which is super cool. we're trying to in the next couple of years start doing like formal workshops and like 
teaching people how to solder or like how to program an Arduino, things like that, and like really give back to the community, which is great. And we're also, our, our space is kind of from weird alt control stuff all the way to games that you can buy. So like Galactic Battleground or Kung Fu Kickball's out now or Nidhogg we're going to have. Um, we're covering like the full gamut there. So it's also a platform to see like, here's new things that you can buy. The arcade is not dead. Here's new stuff that isn't just Killer Queen. Yeah, and I love that. I mean, I, I've been talking to a lot of arcade owners and I actually just spoke with Doc Mack who runs Galloping Ghosts, um, which is the largest arcade in the US. I think he's over 900 games on the floor right now. Dang. Um, he mentioned that the arcade scene is still popular. People still love it. People are going to keep going. But eventually, these old games are going to kind of wear off. You know, like you're going to you're going to find the the gems, the the holy grails. You're going to play them, and then you're kind of going to be done. And indie games are bringing something that the arcade needs. It's new content. It's something interesting, something different. And one thing that I love about a lot of the indies is these are just people that love arcade games. They go to their local arcade. They want to make a game. They try it out, and the owner's like, sure put it in here. We'll check it out and see how it goes. And that's really all it takes is your local arcade owner just needs to know that someone has an interest in putting that game in there and they're usually down for it. So if you're making a game, just ask. It's it's not that bad. Just ask and you yeah. might get your game put somewhere. Um, uh, I, go ahead, Sox. Uh, Kung Fu Kickball like was built. The prototype cab was yeah. built physically at MAGFest. I, I watched that video. That was really cool. Yeah. Um, let's let's dive a little bit deeper into your guys's first stories with magfest because you mentioned in the beginning like you went to magfest you fell in love with it and that's why you're working on it now what are some of those earliest memories of magfest that like really bring you back to that nostalgic day of like this was the first festival i ever went to and it was super cool oh man uh <laughs> here i'll do my i'll do the quick origin story so there's um a guy named uh dominic Cerquetti who um uh, ran MAGFest for, for quite a while, was, uh, you know, the executive director for uh, many years and just, you know, kind of spearheaded quite a lot uh, among, you know, other people um, who really uh, helped push uh, MAGFest forward. But um, my my kind of origin story with this was I was at a different uh, convention. I think it was KatsuCon. And um, I uh, was just kind of like walking into the uh, you know, show floor or no, I was walking into the hotel and I saw that there was just this guy and he had an SUV and uh, he was in, you know, the back of it and the hatch up and he pulled out what looked like a keyboard in a case. And, um, and I was like, Oh, hmm, I, I like the keys. Let's, let's see what this guy's doing. So I just kind of like watched this guy and stalked him for a little while. And, and I was like, where is he bringing this little like piano until he eventually, just settled down in a hallway and i thought like oh no i'm busted like did he did he find me did he spy me uh like uh what's going on and and uh he takes it out and he just starts setting it up right there in the middle of this hallway at katsukan um and uh you know 10 minutes later just kind of like starts playing so i approach him i'm like hey what's going on and he's like oh you know i'm just like playing piano uh here in the hallway at katsukan and i was like cool can i play with you and so uh, for the next uh, two days, we were just jamming with each other in this hallway, uh, you know, attracting different people, taking requests. I was, you know, playing drums on keys, doing all this stuff. And then, like, it was maybe, like, Saturday night uh, that he eventually was like, oh, uh, by the way, if, if you like this kind of thing, um, you should come to what's called MAGFest. And, of course, Dom was literally at KatsuCon to promote MAGFest, and it took him, like, 48 hours to even say the word, <laughs> which is a classic Dom thing, if you know him. Um, and I was like, oh, MAGFest, that sounds really cool, yeah. Um, and um, I would say that that's, like, one of my, my most cherished memories because that was the absolute core of what, like, MAGFest meant to me, which was, like, randomly meeting this dude, uh, approaching him in kind of a weird way, and then just being fully embraced and then just falling in love with like, you know, playing some music, hanging out, making some friends. And uh, it was that tiny little chunk uh, that didn't even happen at a MAGFest. It happened at KatsuCon that kind of opened me up to the world of MAGFest. And then whenever I finally got there, I was like, oh, my God, it is 
just it's just this times like a million. That is so insane. Um, so that's probably like one of my favorite sort of Magfest memories, if you can count that, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my first Magfest 2017. Uh, I was not like involved at that point. It was just hanging out with my buds. Uh, is when I discovered that there were no bad vibes or like you really got to seek out the bad vibes. So I believe Splendor had just come out and my friends and I were sitting in the free tabletop area at like three or four in the morning and just like meeting strangers and exchanging drinks on a Saturday night playing Splendor at 4 a.m. and then going out and like there's still chaos happening as the sun comes up. People are, we didn't even talk about the Colossus roar on this podcast. Oh my God. Which yeah. is probably for the best. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, and just like meeting people and never talking to them again, or like becoming great friends with them. Um, the community is really the best part of the entire event. Yeah. Uh, no bad vibes at all, unless you go seeking them. Uh, yeah yeah <laughs> yeah i mean it it sounds like fun you guys had different experiences obviously like more at a different con for dac but still like meeting someone that's like highly involved in magfest and spending that much time with them before they're like oh hey you should come to this other show like, <laughs> this we do this all the time at that show like that's that's such a hilarious way to get introduced <laughs> to a show and like the, the way you explained it, he's just like so nonchalant about it, like just hung out for two days and then yeah. now you should come over. Um, but it sounds like such a good time. And that's to me what really stands out in in like video game shows is the energy of the show, like the way you feel when you leave the show and the kind of people that you meet at the show. It, it means everything. Like my favorite convention that I go to is Midwest Gaming Classic in Milwaukee. Oh, such a good one. Oh, Love yeah. that and one. We've been going for a while, and I, I talk to Dan all the time, who he pretty much runs everything, and he is the most genuine, awesome guy who just wants to have a good time and wants to share his love with video games with other people, and I don't think it could come through any better than it does, because everybody that's there contributes. Like I know I don't know if they're still doing it, but they were doing a deal where like if you bring two arcade cabinets, you get in for free. So you could bring 10 cabinets and bring five people with you <laughs> because you're contributing so much to the show. And they love history there. Like they have a huge section of, of games and I'm sure you guys have a lot of the same stuff. It's just, it's really cool that these shows build memories with people so much that you guys now focused your career around it or you're volunteering so much time socks that like, you feel invested in it and it, it really means that much to you and it comes through like people see that when they get there and obviously it comes through because mark talks about it year round about how cool the indie <laughs> section is so you're doing something right um i guess just to wrap everything up just let's hear shout outs like who do you guys want to thank who do you want to just give a shout out to quick and then social media and how do people come to the show like what do they have to pay how do they get there stuff like that Okay, we can do that. Slacks, you want to take you want to take it away, or you want me to go? Um, I mean, I can start with shout outs and stuff. Sure, that seems like a spot, right? Um, shout outs to Mark Klebe, Death by Audio Arcade, Baby Castles, who got me interested and involved in the indie arcade scene and brought me to where I am now, um, and all the office staff and the board at Magfest, and all one thousand volunteers for making this event possible. Honestly, yeah, I mean. The shout outs are totally endless. Uh, we've only touched upon, you know, a handful of the departments. There's still, you know, uh, the guest panels, programming, um, charity. You know, yeah, charity, the swag team, uh, the marketplace, which is gigantic. Um, there's there's so many different uh, places. I mean, the biggest shout outs definitely go out to the volunteers. Um, I mean, genuinely, you know, we couldn't do even close to anywhere, uh, anything like this without them. Um, I mean, for people who are interested in attending, um, you can go to uh, magfest.org. Um, what, what's our social media? I should know this stuff. Uh, it's just at magfest for pretty much everything. Um, that includes uh, Twitter. Um, there's a Facebook page, all the normal, you know, stuff. I don't know, just Google. Um, if you are interested in coming, uh, you can purchase uh, badges on our website and like 
10 seconds before we started this podcast, we even generated a code for the, for the podcast, which is uh, uh, M-A-G-I-A-W for $15 off. So um, if anybody wants to use that, I think it's all caps, M-A-G-I-A-W. Joe, you can probably like toss that on the screen or something, yep, right? I'll throw that up. Word. Um, yeah, but I mean, uh, you know, it's just, it's it's so much fun. And and Joe, I, am, I, am I getting this right? Have you not been to MAGFest? I have not been to MAGFest. Oh, I that's a mistake. So, we got to fix so that. So much about it. I, yeah, like, I had to have you guys on. This is, I mean, we got to get you there, right? Like yeah, that, absolutely. Like, what's, what's going on in January? Because, you know, you got to come see what it's all about. And then we can have a follow-up, you know, and we can, you can, you can. On site, baby. Yeah, you can, you can, you can let us know if we were uh, just, you know, full of baloney or if it was actually <laughs> really good, you know. Um, it would be so, so great to have you there, man. I'd, I'd love to go. Um, I'm definitely down to talk about it. We'll try to make it work this year. If not, I've it's like number one on my list for next year so heck yeah it's, uh, there's it's also definitely mag, the mag west yeah there's uh, mag the west end of summer yeah. in california yeah, that's, that's in uh, san jose then we have uh sort of a, a camping uh event mag stock which is usually in uh the uh the mid late summer um or early summer something like that um and that's kind of local around here uh, on the east coast but you know we always have uh little events and big events um, for Super Mag Fest, the one that's coming up in January. You know, generally speaking, I think in the, like a non-COVID year, we've had, uh, I think we hit like 23 or 24,000 people. So it's it's pretty sizable. Uh, that, that number has, you know, definitely been like chopped down some since the pandemic naturally, um, which honestly kind of makes it even more chill. There are, you know, very few lines. You know, I got a game of NBA Jam in just like right away, you know, just hop right on that killer queen. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, it's even if I wasn't working there, I, I, I have told all of my friends to come to MAGFest basically since I was introduced to it because it's just the most fun that I have uh, every single year. It's so much fun. Yeah, I, I want to make a trip out there. I'm in Minnesota, so I'm like smack dab in the middle oh, of everything. Oh, shout outs to Minnesota. All right. Um, <laughs> Do you know about VGM Con? Yeah, I went to VGM Con the oh, last yeah. like yeah. three years. V VGM Con, if, uh, for people who are in uh, Minnesota, it's uh, it's got a very similar vibe to yep. uh, uh, MAGFest. Well, actually, more like Mag West. It's a lot smaller, but um, you know we're, we're good friends with all those people. They're amazing people. Um, you know, big, big shout outs uh, to you know Thomas and crew. Um, definitely go check out VGM con. That's usually in, what is that in like it's March, March, March? I've, I've yeah, got a flyer like up on my board. Perfect. Right here, so <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good, good stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't think I've been, I don't think I've been on the East coast since like seventh grade. So it's, it's been, a, it's been a minute since I've been out there. Oh, dang. We um, gotta get you out for yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll make it work. Um, again, thank you guys for coming on. I really appreciate, uh, you guys chatting about, about the show and what's going on and kind of telling us what you do there. And if you want to go to MAGFest, like uh, Dak said, we've got the code, uh, capital M-A-G-I-A-W for $15 off. I'm going to put that in the link below so you guys can check that out. Uh, go. I mean, why not, right? Yeah. Every, every, go. you got to go to something what, every what, year. What are you least, doing on January 5th? You're not doing anything. <laughs> right, exactly. You call off work. You know, you got, you got, you know, say you got sick over New Year's. Just a it's couple fine. days. Not yeah, a big it's, deal. Be, it's, it's fine. Awesome. And if you guys like what we're doing here at Indie Arcade Wave, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. It helps us a ton. The wave will keep growing and we can all ride it. And until next time, peace. <laughs>